Hello and welcome back to Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources. Now, you know that I'm not much of a man for before and after photos because um, I think ADHD kicks in and I just fire in with a new job and I forget to show you the before photos. So what's going on behind me here is a day's work fixing my shipping container that I discovered with horrendous leaks after two weeks of solid rain. So come with me and I'll show you exactly what I did to fix it on the cheap, of course. Right, before we get up onto the container roof, have a look at what I've been using. First thing I had to do was get up there and bash off the flaky rust. So I've got my heavy, heaviest, sharpest hammer. And I've been uh, chipping away at the nasty bits and I've exposed a f quite a few new holes. Anyway, that gets off the worst of it. Broom the rust off the roof so that it's nice and clean again with a stiff broom. So while you're using a hammer like this on a big echoey tin box like that, the next thing you'll need is a pair of earmuffs like these. Because they're the best earmuffs I've got. So put those on, get in with the hammer, and bash off all that flaky rust. Then, when you've swept it clean, the next thing to do is to paint it with a good rust converter. And what you do is put the rust converter into a separate container, because once you've contaminated a batch with rust, it can never go back in here. Otherwise, it will activate everything else in the bottle, and next time you come to use it, it'll be useless, because it's already done its job in the bottle. The next product we'll be using is Gilsonite. This company calls theirs Gilsoflex, but what it is, is a Gilsonite roof sealer and paint. This is not really a paint, it's a bitumen coating. It's waterproof and mold proof. I've been using it for years. I recommend it for anything that's going to spend its life outdoors. I use it on everything underneath in my Land Rovers and trailers. So let's head up the ladder and we'll get up there and I'll show you what my plan is. I've dealt to quite a lot down this end and I'm now back up here. Not so many holes up here, but these patches were put down over something that was already rusted and even though it was seam welded all the way around, the water has got in there and rusted between the two layers of metal. So I've Put the rust killer on. Any of the actual holes I've been fixing with this stuff. Flashing tape. This is for around house windows. They use it when they're building them. It's inside the walls. You'll never see it, but it's awesome for um, handy people to have around because it's a bitumen thick, tarry, incredibly sticky, strong, waterproof tape. It can be used for so many things and it's relatively cheap. So here's my lovely pine tree that's been dropping needles down on it for years. And here's an example of the holes. And here's some holes that I've already worked on. Massive hole there that needs to be fixed. A couple more here some smaller ones. Now once I've done all these I'm going to go over it with the Gilsonite paint and paint all of the rusty portions and then when that's done I'll be using an old advertising banner, the kind of thing that you see on the side of the motorway and in the big cities. You can pick those up really really cheap if you just find out where. What you've got to look for is um, hoarding removal or banner removal companies and they're just dying to get rid of these things. They're waterproof, they're UV protected on the printed size side so if you want them to last you must use the printed side outside. So that's going to go over and I'll chuck these things up here that I've already got up here for storage these are greenhouse hoops. I'll use them at some stage, but 
right now they need to be up here for storage so they're going to provide the weight that will hold this plastic cover down this plastic cover is big enough to hang over by about 600 mils all the way around so I'll cut some darts into the corners probably and tape them I want this to be the kind of mission that anybody can achieve. No specialist equipment, just the bare essentials to do a decent job of waterproofing an old container. Using the window flashing tape to cover the holes is awesome, but you can't pussyfoot around with it. Getting the backing tape off it, don't faff about with being delicate just dig in with your fingernails and scruff up a corner then you can get it separated don't worry it's bitumen it's soft and it will push back into shape and digging your fingernail under it just won't separate you've got to be quite savage with it to get the backing off it's best done on a warm surface on a warm day but you can see from the shadows here that it's midwinter and the sun is really low in the sky all day. It's not warm, so I'm going to have to get it done before the dew comes down tonight. This one's going to be a challenge. But nobody's up here, so it shouldn't really matter that I'm bridging such a large hole with a soft piece of flashing tape. It is going to keep the water out and any further rusting will take years to develop. This is not a permanent fix, it's not like welding patches in, but it will buy me between 5 and 10 years without having to do any further work. Even though I'm putting this down onto cold steel, any subsequent hot days are just going to help it bed in even better. It's really, really good stuff, and um, I've never seen this leak again after it's been used. I've seen people use it on the seams of aluminium boats that have started to leak with great success. Small patches or large patches, it really doesn't seem to make a difference. It's all damn good. Here's a patch that I put up about five years ago. Could be more, I'm not sure. But it's just started to creep around a little bit the edges. I'm going to put some more tape down both sides just to make sure that uh, that stays waterproof. I'll cut the tape in half and just put one strip down either side. And now it's time to crack on with getting the gilsonite on. The gilsonite is a tarry liquid. It's not actually a paint and it's not quite a tar. Gilsonite is related to tar and bitumen, but the biggest difference is that it hardens. And once it's hardened, it won't soften again in the hot sun like tar or bitumen will. So it's incredibly durable for painting any outside steelwork. Dodgy old roofs, leaking shipping containers, car chassis, trailer frames, anything at all. It's quite cheap and I've been using it for the last 30 years. In 30 years the price has gone up by $10 a can. Can't begrudge them that. It's locally made. I've met the guy who makes it and he's very, very helpful. House truckers have been using this brushed into old bed sheets stretched over their house truck roofs for many, many years to keep them watertight. Okay, now the paint's on and dried. It's time to get this advertising banner folded out and in position. 
ready to fold out over the roof. Now I do realise how dangerous it is to be up on a container roof with no safety harness and no safety rails around the edge. So what I'm using here is my very lifelike transhuman drone. I'm actually operating this facsimile of me from a concrete safety bunker down the other end of the property. So don't you worry about my safety on top of the container at all. As I fold this thing out, I'm intrigued to discover what the advertising slogan or picture might be. And it's not making any sense so far. It's like something from a dictionary. And I can't see any recognisable business logo. So what a waste of money that was. Huge sign, buy the motorway. Don't know what it's for. Right, so there you have it. One container, waterproofed, and all it cost me was half a can of Gilsonite and a $20 advertising banner and half a roll of flashing tape. About 50 bucks all up. <laughs>